What's up? This is Rena G on Christmas Eve. Sometimes I feel so stupid. Like I had a uh, ghetto stand of a can of tahini that fell in the background. You can't see this from the camera. It just literally fell into my whole silverware dish, the whole thing of tahini. Luckily, I love tahini. I've been like just eating it off my hand. Uh, but like I said, it's just like sometimes I really do feel like just so fucking stupid and just like whatever. But I remember these people are such powerful figures in my life. Like my grandfather and some of his words that he spoke to me in the ripple effects that make me get up and just boom, spark up. So I don't really know if that relates to what I'm saying here, but it kind of does where... I feel that this is a platform where certain things I do channel and uh, I love putting down. Um, this gives me a platform to do that. And I don't know where this information comes from in my head. Um, but I'm going to title this one, I guess, The Beat of Life and Universal Language and how I get into these modes where I see things. But even the other night I called Bro Sanchez. There's other things I was trying to write down and articulate. And uh, this cat Jason was putting up some stuff. I believe based on spherical math. Which I saw what he was doing. But sometimes you try to think about something. And, and uh, you don't want to miss your spot or forget what you're saying. So you're not always tuning in with other people and siphoning you know, siphoning those aha moments or whatever. Um, when there's a lot of people trying to get in at the same time. So, anyway, I get excited with this and sometimes it sparks a lot of epiphanies. So I have a lot of notes, but a lot of this I'm freestyling with because I just feel in my groove of what I'm talking about here. And the shit just keeps flowing. So let me jump into this with the abracadabra. what the hell I'm talking about so very the only word that really starts with apro is abrasion when we look at abrasion that means to scrape or to tear at and we look at ripple rip and pull is in ripple makes me think of rip van winkle see all these things just kind of flow to me I don't even remember the whole story but um to keep it flowing, the universal knowledge. When I speak of Adam's rib and the story of Adam's rib, that goes from Adam to Eve in. Uh, we know that's obviously male and female, and we could tell positive and negative. But we're also talking about a gear too, um, like shifting gears, because there's only one gear that's optimal for what um, gra grade level, whatever. You know, you could call it gravity, you could call it resistance, um, friction, whatever. Th whatever gear you're in is optimal for the terrain. Or even if there's a sharp turn coming up, you can predict that sharp turn and downshift before the turn. And you're kind of engine braking before the turn in anticipation. So there's a lot of uh, stuff that kind of relates to motors and engines and um getting into it when you open your mouth the first thing you say is ah or the a the a is shaped like a triangle and uh at the center of the alphabet we have the m and the n which resembles the beat of life the flat line zip flat line Going 13 in both directions. So, I'm kind of putting some other half-ass presentations I did up like private. Because I want to get that information together here so it all flows. So, when we talk about emanate, 
We know the infinity symbol is like an eight sideways. Okay. So it's kind of like a knot. You think of the ankh. And so when you see that, you also kind of see a needle. You see the needle head. So again, so you reap what you sow. And that's also going to get me into see and saw, the seesaw that kind of emanates from the center. See the seesaw and these arrows make up an X when they're connected. In X, we get ETC for etc. Continuous, but also electricity, X. ETC is pronounced X, etc. So, with the needle, we also have need and then L. The L actually resembles a needle. It also represents a number one. And in the word need, when you scramble that, we also have Eden. From the beginning of the alphabet, A to M, we have AM, the morning, beginning of the day. I have a bump on my head. I hit my head at the laundromat, grow my hair out. I didn't see the thing. I hit my head on it. So I'm like, sometimes I feel so stupid, man. I hit that with the tahini today. But, uh... So I don't, I feel like I'm, this shit just keeps flowing to me. So I want to drop these electric charges I get down. So and hopefully siphon with some cats. I tried to call in the Bro Sanchez show today. I couldn't connect and somebody was blocking my comments. So I said, hey, I'm going to go uh, live. So that's cool, man. I choose to uh, be benevolent over malevolent, which has to do with the currency. And it also has to do with the apex. So now we talk about the apex. The apex. Like pex. Which we're kind of getting at that. Um, what I talked about at the beginning. With the abrasion. And the ripple. So the apex. Now when we look at this we're seeing patterns. And in the word patterns, we see tap turns. So with the apex, the apex is the top. If you look at a wave, a surfer riding a wave, he's at the tip, the tip of the wave. He's not getting underneath the wave. He's not getting left behind in the wave. He's using that force of the wave to carry him at the top. Another analogy is an airplane flies against the wind. So it turns its, you know how to turn its, um rudders or whatever wings whatever so we see a lot of these analogies in the words too relating to boats and ships and scrambling of words and letters and sounds between all different languages it said that rosetta stone is where all these languages came from from these universal patterns we know that whoever put the English language is the angel language. And um, there's combinations. So, for instance, in Swedish, the word soul skin is like um, honey or something, like sunshine. But you say that in English, you're saying soul skin. And how, how do all these different things correlate so there's obviously frequencies involved knowledge of and then i also see um depth perception so you see a depth perception a depth a depth perception so let me write this out i can pause this keep going also 
in the word in the word ankh we see the word can we see not we know that ankh is known as a knot and it's from a place called tayet in africa so we say tie knot tie the knot so When you look at TIE, that's 29 and 5 with the letters, which is 295, 2 and 9. It's 11, which is 2 and 5 equals 7. So you see 7, untie, 21, which is 3, 14, 5, same thing. So 3 and 5 is 8 and 7, which is 15, which is 6, right? And I want to jump. I want to jump to these bullet points. I don't want to just tangle up in doing math, right? I'm going to jump to these points here. So we see tie and untie. So this is paying attention to the tap, the patterns, tapping these turns, and the bond bonding these frequencies through the rib. And like I said, there's one gear that works as we're looking through these different angles that connects them. Um, with energy, tying and untying is also looking at tension. And we could also look at that as attention, paying attention. And then when we look at Lucifer, it's also loose, Lucifer. Christ sounds like tight. Christ equals seven. It's either Christ or Jesus Christ. That I gotta look at my notes. Let's let's check it out real quick. Yeah, no, Christ is three eight nine. So we got three eight nine. I is nine. Great. Eighteen equals nine. S nineteen nineteen is one. T is T two. So eleven is two. Nine is eleven, which is two, and nine which is eleven, which is two. One was three and five equals two. Okay, so Jesus Christ equals seven. We're getting there because Jesus is that's one, it's ten, right? He is five, S is one, twenty one is three, and one, so six, one, seven, and three is one. Holy shit. J is one. Six. One is seven. And three is ten, which is one. And S is two. Man, my math is fucked up. Three and eight is eleven, which is two. And nine. Eleven, which is two. And nine. It's eleven, which is two. And one is three. And two is five. Christ equals five. Jesus equals two. So that's seven. Jesus Christ equals seven. In seven, we see the crease. So Jesus Christ is the crease. Damn, I know that took me a minute. Okay, I said I wasn't going to do that. <clears throat> That's why I don't like to tangle up, man. That's why I like to go to my notes where I've already done that. So um, if I get tangled up, I'm going to do that as I continue. But so you can see Jesus Christ equals seven, okay? So... We see six and double too. 
You see it in the Roman numeral. Right here. That's interesting. Devil actually equals seven. I wonder if that's what that L is at the end. Or maybe it's the six and the seven. That's another way of looking at it. Okay, freestyling with that one. So, I'm going to stick with the abracadabra here. And we're going to jump back into this with attention because you'll see this in the patterning. So we know that the uh, occult used Baphomet. There's Abrahamic, Abrahamic religions. And we're also going to look at the patterns here too. So, and Ba. These two two first letters here, A and B, can also be seen as one and two. If you look at the etymology of zero, zero equals one, which is gonna which is the last letter. So another interesting thing about one and two, both one and two are three letters where zero is four and um three is five so that gets into that four and the five with the flickering thing but i don't want i want to keep it flowing here with what i'm talking about so with that a b we see these three triangles and both one and two are three letter words so we can see how one starts with three And that A itself, you know, like Adam, we see the rib in the capital A. And then I guess these could be the two, two pillars, two legs. So, Moses split the Red Sea. In C, we see current. And we also see the number three. That's the third letter. Brief intermission, it's Christmas Eve. I gotta light up my Christmas tree real quick. In the background, I have a candle burning for my boy who passed away, Jeff G. Last year, it was my grandmother who passed away. So when we get into these talks about time and metaphysics, um, going back some years, I lost a really close friend, and even before then, we were all into this stuff. But I just could be getting more and more into it, and it's, it's really personal. So I'm here by myself on Christmas Eve. I'm a vegan for about two years, and uh, only one of my family. And uh, kind of the nonconformist at the moment. Uh, quote unquote black sheep or whatever or well, that's how I'm looked at <clears throat> I don't want to <coughs> air out personal shit <coughs> but just I also want to express myself as I truly am and kind of what makes me get into this stuff here and uh, I don't know I was born between two eclipses in one week with the moon in Pisces um, I've attributed that, you know, I go with it because, uh, 
feels natural to me. So I'm going with it. So anyway, here we go. When we're looking at this shit, it's like currents, right? So there's got to be some knowledge in this. And, uh... At the center of our timeline, it was split between B.C. and A.D. So we got B.C. and A.D. So we're looking at Abra or ABC. We just look at it like ABC. D, ABC, D. <laughs> we're getting this. A, B, C, D. So what I'm getting at is you can see how the A is over here on the right side, not on the left. Now, remember, Adam gave his rib. Adam gave his rib to Eve. So this gets into a whole bunch of shit. Um, you know, Domini. But you also see Ad if you add one more D. But when we're not only looking at the patterns, we're also listening to the sounds. So it's the patterns, the frequencies. It's um, how these things, it's the correlating... Correlation. We say building. I guess that would be building, right? Brainstorming. Well, this is the lightning and the storm, the shit that connects. Now, when you look at the one, two, speaking of sounds, you also can hear want, want to. And when we left Eden, Adam and Eve left Eden is also need. So we're dealing with need and want. And then you also see tone. You see tone, the W could be tone. Neo, we know that, we know Neo. There was something else I was thinking that's, that's, I forgot, I skipped a beat. Well, in two, in two we also have toe, because the two kind of toes the one. And we also have watt, like electricity. Sherlock and Watson. But it's interesting, so we got the A, B, C, and then the D. Let me pause this so I keep this flowing. Okay. Well, we're dealing with ABC. With sounds. Also dealing with the Kabbalah. We're also dealing with back. Back to the future. Because the last shall be first. And I'm going to get into the Z. Three Zs is the sleep. And that coordinates with the three here. And we have the same symbol. The center, we have, there's two ways of looking at this. The M, it's interesting that cursive is being taken away. It's another way of kind of pulling apart ways of seeing things. But when you look at the M and the N, we see three triangles up and three triangles down. All right, we know that mm, him, it's to say him or condemn or whatever. The M takes on the N, almost like a marriage, like Adam and Eve N. The N is hidden. If you look at the word hidden, it's like hide N. Looking for my eraser as I'm flowing here. So, what's up? This is Renegy. This is my channel. I get all these epiphanies. I'm putting down some symbology on my Insta, which is what it is.
I used to freestyle back in the days. I'm 40 years old right now. Um, I'm outside of Hartford, Connecticut. And uh, I've always had friends that, you know, were into stuff like me, like the skateboarding and stuff or cousins. And uh, But I've not been central around one area. I've traveled around a lot as a kid. <clears throat> a lot of it was being bounced around. But uh, I've always been into art and um, skateboarding and things like that. Just being original, doing trips, going, going around like the way you're supposed to be doing there to get to places. And, uh, you know, I feel like this has been good for my brain exercise. And uh, But I'm kind of in a league of my own here. Not my own, but just where I'm trying to link up with people that can connect with what I'm doing, man. So when you look at the word syllable, when we're dealing with sound... Syllable. It's three, three syllables in the word syllable. And everything emanates, you know, with syllables. And I was listening, this feed came up on Irish music. I listened to it. I'm actually technically mainly Scottish. But, I, you know, I got feeling this Hungarian-Austrian mix. Uh, so, their whole thing is, their whole, diddly doodly diddly biddly biddly hoodly goodly iddly, you know, doodly biddly bakali goodly doodly, whatever. It was all three syllables. So, I'm like, that's interesting. So, that actually had me thinking about Samson and Delilah. I looked up. This rapper, who I fucking beat him in a in a freestyle battle when I was 15. I was home alone, just like I am right now. And I call in, and it was a freestyle. This dude Metro Boombox from the Boondocks, with this dude Apathy. And it's uh, I got a cousin who who did something with Snow. I don't want to just do name drop because it has nothing to do with this. It kind of does. But anyway, uh, I was talking about that three syllables. And uh, I looked up this dude, Apathy, and this gets into what I'm talking about right now. And then it was a, like a Masonic sign was doing this. And I'm like, oh, this dude's a Mason right now? And uh, I'm like, all right. That's kind of a surprise. But uh, here's the thing. My great-grandfather was a, um, a sh Shriner. And... Um, It's probably from hitting my head earlier, huh? Or that marker, damn, one of them. So, it's a very chill night. At least I took a shower. I have to take another one. So, anyway, um, this is all third eye mind. This is not being taught anything. This isn't like going to, you know, I've been independent my whole life. I've never been part of any organizations or cults or anything like that. So... Um, I get to do this stuff. Um, I know some people go off of conspiracy stuff and end up missing and all that crap. And I'm not going to live on fear. Uh, if, I'm, if anybody has anything to say to me, let me know. Um, I'm going strictly third eye. So, because um, I'm going to get into some shit that if it's revealing shit, it's shit that's talking to me. So, like, when you look at the Sphinx... The Sphinx is a cat, and in the word cat, you have the word act, but also, you also have Let me connect that with that one, the one and the two So with the Sphinx, you got the word spin You have like fire When we get into that with the hocus pocus and the focus And you got spin X, which is that ETC, electricity. You could say set with a CET. Which current has CET in it too, actually current. Ink, you know, ink is like blood, re represents blood. Blood. 
sphere and fear. So we have two perspectives, like ape, we're told from apes, and, the, and really to keep us from our apex. So what happened, that X right there, Jesus is a thief that stole our time because they changed the timeline from 360 degrees to 360, like this, this bouncing back pattern frequency. So this was before the English language. So going with what I what I understand here, what I'm standing on, pivot stepping on here, always best foot forward. The three crosses. So Jesus died between the three two thieves, which sounds like two threes. <clears throat> thieves. And then we always see the symbology with the birds. You go to biblical stuff, you're going to see this everywhere. Everywhere. You see the Buddha, you always see him holding a bird, and Buddha is a bud. You know, the four leaf clover is the lucky one. Uh, so you got the serpent, the serpent climbing up the tree. There's two trees, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, tree of life. So the two birds, it's interesting when you, when you draw threes, they look like birds and the M's when you write them upside down. M's the 13th letter. So it gets into Moses. So we're talking about M. Moses had a staff. The staff, we got the word fast. So we're dealing with time here. He got the word on the mountain. So we're dealing with reflection. We're dealing with windows. We're dealing with mirror. And the word window. W I N D O W. We're dealing with reflections. So when you write I N D O, if you write that as a lowercase d, you can see open. You know, Moses opened the sea, he parted the sea. Now we're dealing with Odin. And you know, it's o open sesame. And if you write sesame backwards, Sesame, Moses, it's Moses with the E, which also looks like a three. Uh, seed also makes me, like sesame seed also makes me think of said, you know, because it spoke on the mountain. When we look at 23, it's the fifth letter. When we're dealing with the patterns, you see the L and the U. So this is going to take me back to the whole beginning of the abracadabra. So I have, I'm looking at this from different views, from the 